Welcome back to Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford. The New Bedford High Football Whalers taking on the Durfee Hilltoppers, as we pointed out before, the 65th meeting between the two teams. New Bedford currently leads the series 44-16-4. That's the meeting times on Thanksgiving. 99th time these two teams have battled it out on the grid overall. New Bedford holding a 61-30-7 edge. Hoping to make it 62 today in the rain and the mud. Well, I'll tell you, this is as big as it gets. Uh, we even uh, get the mayors of the both cities involved. As you heard Rosemary Tierney last night uh, telling uh, folks that uh, the new Bedford Wellers were definitely going to take this. And uh, and she said, Mayor Mitchell said, asked her for some points. And she said, now we're not going to give you any points on this one. We're going to win. Although Mayor Mitchell asked for the points simply because he obviously feels he needs the points, but of course we won't say anything about that. Nonetheless, uh, the biggest rivalry in and throughout the area. Everyone knows New Bedford and Durfee on Thanksgiving Day. At least when you say Durfee and New Bedford on Thanksgiving Day, people know exactly what you mean. And as you said, 99th meeting overall for these two clubs. The 65th meeting on Thanksgiving Day. And just to let you know, Durfee has not won since 1983. They've dropped five in a row by a combined score, Paul, of 124 to 20 and we're talking about the rain and all how about the band huh i mean we <laughs> the band in the rain <laughs> i can't imagine you know remember band on the run well this is band in the rain <laughs> and they did a nice job in the national That's anthem right. the new bedford whalers did win the toss they have elected to receive mike muniz for the durfee hilltoppers have teed it up he will kick off from his own 40 yard line jojo Gernine and jeff correa back deep but it's a ground ball kick picked up by corey Medeiros at about the 25 yard line loose ball Corey keeps fumbling and bumbling with it, understandable, but he does come up with a football just outside the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the New Bedford Whalers on offense. Let's start with the offensive line. The center is Craig Espinola. The guards, Rich Ribeiro, Greg Seguin. The tackles, Brian Cardozo and John Preston. Backs and receivers, quarterback is Matt Trahan. The fullback, Sharik Mendes. Halfback, Jojo Gerdine. Tight end, TJ Gerdine. And the potential wide receivers switching off, Marcel Gonsalves, Derek Duclos, and Fu Jeff Carrere wrapping up a tremendous career at New Bedford High School. This is the fourth year in a row that he has started on the varsity. He was a starting varsity member as a freshman. First down and 10, New Bedford. They're at their 25-yard line. Carrere gets the pitch the other way but loses his footing right away. And that's no surprise. A loss of a couple yards. And this will be a second down. New Bedford trying to cut it the other way, but it doesn't quite happen. Well, the enemy is certainly going to be the field conditions and the rain, and we talked about that in our open, how definitely the field conditions are going to have an effect on this game. It's not going to be put out. The ball's not going to be put in the air that much. Korea's not going to have that much opportunity to catch the ball, and yet there, in a little trick play, Korea loses his footing and he uh, loses a couple of yards. So it's already working against both these teams here. Second down and 13, a loss of three. Derek Duclos to the left. Jeff Correa in motion to the near side, movement on the line, flags down, quick inside handoff. Sharik Mendes had the ball, but they whistled it dead before that. There was some movement, and I believe it's going against the New Bedford Whalers, and it is. Guys on the right side of that line moving. Well, we have the chance. Let's take a look at the Durfee defense. Up front, Mike Muniz, the nose guard, Peter Opper, Ryan Oliveira, Jim Malumba. Defensive ends, Megna and Silva. And back in the secondary, Pacheco and Rogers on the corners. The linebackers, Pacheco and Phoenix. John Phoenix wrapping up a great career as a linebacker. Palumbo and Brian Naraki, younger brother of a, another Naraki that played for Durfee a couple years back, Steve. I thought whales uh, don't mind the water. <laughs> they like it. They're supposed to, anyway. <laughs> Second down and 18 at the 17-yard line. This is Jojo Goodine. Goodine has plenty of room. Goodine will be short of the first down, though, as he is knocked down at the 35-yard line. Great job of running by Jojo Goodine. And I'll tell you, it was wide open field in front of him, not a hilltopper within about three yards of him when he broke through the line of scrimmage. Uh, Durfee, or rather New Bedford, doing a great job opening up the holes early. Just right now, the footing is the problem. Hill conditions really not helping. Talk about ruining the Durfee defense there. They thought they had New Bedford pinned. Now it's a third down and one, and Matt Trahan wants a timeout. 9.31 to go here in the first quarter at a rainy Paul Walsh field. No score. You gotta like the way New Bedford capitalized on that second down and 18 as JoJo Goodine runs 17 yards. 
Well, there's no doubt about that. The one thing that you also have to look at today is uh, although the running games are going to uh, compile some yardage for both sides, it's going to be a different sort of running game because the cutbacks and the uh, good footing type of, uh, good, the, the, you know, guys like Jojo Godine who constantly keep their feet moving, it's going to affect them because, you know, the, you know, it's so wet down there, and as you saw with Korea, the minute he tried to cut inside when he saw a hole, he was uh, stuck in uh, a mud patch and kind of just went down. So that's going to have an effect in the running game, straightforward running. It's going to be a real basic running attack today, a real basic uh, kind of, uh, I guess you could call it, achievement <laughs> today for both teams. Matt Trahan, the quarterback, wrapping up his high school career, was the starting quarterback. Picked over Corey Vidaris last year, but he got injured. Corey ended up being the quarterback for the remainder of last year. This year, it came down to those two again. And Matt Trahan is the quarterback. Sharik Mendy's up the middle. He will have the first down. There were flags on the play, however. We'll see what happens pending the flag. Sharik picking up about four yards up the middle, and it's going against the Durfee Hilltoppers. So the Bedford Wheelers will have the first down here. Now, that would be neat if we could see that again because I'm not sure if it was actually Sharik Mendes or Jojo Gadine who had the ball. I don't know if that was such a, uh, it might have been a great f fake handoff on Sharik Mendes. It's very hard to see also with the rain and all that. It's a, it's a difficult game all around for us too. We're gonna see that replay. And let's see who actually has that ball. There's Trahan, and as you see, was that a terrific, terrific fake handoff? It was actually Gadine who had the ball, not Mendes, but of course, great execution by both. And there you have it. What kind of a formation was that? Rudy Bulger is throwing it long for Jeff Correa. Correa is there, he dives, and can't make the catch at the Durfee Hilltopper 13-yard line. New Bedford lining everybody up to the near side of the field. The football almost by itself in the middle. The ball snap, and the quarterback of the future, Rudy Bulger, going deep for Foo. And Bulger showed what kind of stuff he has and what kind of quarterback New Bedford has in the future. That was a great play. Looks like Wayne Hamlin will see that. There's Bulger on the fake punt. He grabs it. And really not a bad throw. Let him, let him a little bit too much. And uh, certainly the weather has something to do with that. But that's the guy you're going to see the next couple of years. And uh, New Bedford back in the eye <laughs> formation now. Second down and 10. Inside handoff, Sharik Mendes, the fullback, battling up the middle for a gain of about five yards. Sharik, one of those small backs, 5'5", 155-pound sophomore. Eight touchdowns on the year, and you can tell why with that little burst up the middle there. Now, the, the, the play previous to this one was a first down. It looked like it was some kind of a fake punt. That's probably what you'll see them do so often on a fake uh, fourth and one or something like that. You'll see how it go to that kind of a play, possibly, that kind of trick play. Correa wide to the near side, do close up top. Third down and five. Quick pass to T.J. Godine, the tight end, has a first down and more. Knocked down at the Durfee Hilltopper 42-yard line. First pass completion of the game, and it goes to the tight end, T.J. Godine, brother of JoJo. That's right. Matt Trahan to Jeff Correa has been a lethal combination. Uh, Correa, one of the top receivers in the state with seven touchdowns this year. Trahan has thrown eight touchdowns, and somebody we tend to forget so often is that big tight end, T.J. Godine, who has done so much blocking, receiving, and just about everything else for New Bedford. And uh, he's someone to look to with that short pass. First down and 10 at the Durfee 42-yard line. New Bedford threatening early. Sharik Mendes breaks it. Mendes past the 35-yard line to about the 32. Be very close to the first down. Rick Palumbo, one of the stoppers, number 45 for the Durfee Hilltoppers. I'll tell you, these players are going to go home today, Paul. They're going to be muddy and dirty, and they're going to have mud in their hair and their eyebrows, and they're going to say, hey, look, Ma. I played football today, and they love it. They love getting muddy and dirty. They look like football players. You've got to get a quick shower before you sit down and have the turkey <laughs> after playing in this. No, 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 I'm going to sit down right now because I'm a man. <laughs> Second down and about three, Joe Joker nine, the deep back with the pitch. JoJo breaks it. Knocked out of bounds at about the 22-yard line, a gain of 10 yards, and another New Bedford first down, the third of this opening drive. JoJo Gadon doing what he does best quick little running back and he's done so much for New Bedford. The one thing also that you're going to see today is a lot of these players, and there's the replay, and steps out of bounds, actually pushed out of bounds is Jojo Godine. A lot of these players are not going to be able to get that full acceleration because of the uh, field conditions. That's something to look for as well. 
First down and 10 at the Durfee Hilltopper 22 yard line. Too close at Correa to the right. Mendes and Gernard behind Trayan. And it's Sharik Mendes. Sharik following his blockers. Gets down to about the 15 yard line. That's a seven yard gain. And pretty good job of blocking by the left guard there. Rich Ribeiro just cleaned out a spot to the left side of that line. Now did you wish the uh, nice people a happy Thanksgiving? Yes. Remember that right at the beginning? I think, yeah. First words out of my mouth. She <laughs> did that. It's going to be a long drive to Jersey. <laughs> I'll tell you, it did. It, it. You're heading there right after this, right? Well, I'm on my way. I mean, I, I would have, I would rather drive in the snow, to be honest, you know. <laughs> but it will be a long drive. It's uh, certainly uh, where I'm going. Get to see the family and friends. And have an injured player on the field, number 99, Eric Silva of the Durfee Hilltoppers. He's the linebacker, the senior, 5'11", 190. Don't want to see him go down in his senior year, last game. And he's off to the sidelines for the moment. Second down and three, New Bedford at the enemy 15. Correa pitching out to Jojo Gernine. Gernine breaks it. Touchdown! Jojo Gernine. A 15-yard run for JoJo, and New Bedford is up 6-0 with 7.02 to go in the first. Well, Paul, we'll see this replay once again, and the person who made the play happen, number 82, Jeff Correa, on the lead block, giving Gadon the room to find the corner of the end zone. 82, look for 82, and we see the replay. He's at the top of your screen. Here's Matt Tran, will pitch back, now watch 82 in the corner of your screen right there. Good job blocking by both Correa and Sharik Mendes, the fullback. New Bedford on top early, heavily favored coming into this game, of course. Had to be a letdown for the Durfee Hilltopper defense because of the penalties and because of that first down slip on New Bedford's first play from scrimmage. They had New Bedford at a second down and 18 and a 17-yard run and wiped that right out, made it a third and one, so. Corey Medeiros setting up for the extra point, but it's a delay of the game, taking too much time. Usually Kevin Granado kicking the extra points, although we have seen Corey Medeiros kicking off now and again. So move that ball back, and we'll see whether or not New Bedford can convert here as a result of this five-yard penalty. So it'll be, or it'll be the equivalent of a 25-yard field goal. <laughs> Corey, wide to the right. So the New Bedford Whalers have to settle for the 6-0 lead. 7.02 to go here in the first quarter. And as we were saying, Durfee had them pinned on that long third and 18. New Bedford ended up converting, ended up with four first downs in that drive. And now the Durfee Hilltoppers really have to answer back right away. Bob Bogan told me before the game that he's got to keep the ball away from New Bedford's offense and eat up the clock and keep it on the ground. And that's really... Durfee's only hope in this football game. New Bedford uh, did nicely on offense. Uh, they mixed up their plays a little bit. Uh, they had that one trick play uh, where Bolger th uh, tried to throw the uh, <laughs> long bomb to uh, Korea, which is just a little bit uh, ahead of Korea. But I like the way Wayne Hamlet uh, likes to throw those trick plays in and likes to kind of uh, keep that defense off balance. Uh, in the offensive scheme of things, uh, he ran uh, to both sides of the field, also threw the ball a little bit, and a uh, nice reception uh, by uh, T.J. Gadine, which set up uh, a first down. So, uh, you know, they're really doing a little bit of everything, and now we have to see what they'll do defensively. You say, actually you didn't say, but everybody has said this is going to be a blowout. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw scores like 46 to nothing and uh, you know 46-3 and all that. Well, that's probably not going to happen. But if things remain as they did in that opening drive. Could happen. It could happen, absolutely. <laughs> you know, when they did that wild play, you almost wonder, well, maybe Durfee could have lined up around the ball <laughs> and gone in for the sack, but they lined up opposite New Bedford, you know, about 10 yards I, to the I, left of I the ball. I wonder if they've seen know. that because I've never know. seen I, that. I don't I know what that is. It looked like, one of, uh, it looked like a trick <laughs> punt or something. I, I was confused. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that was Jojo Gadine's ninth touchdown of the season. So good job for number 30. So the ball will be kicked off from New Bedford's own 40-yard line. Corey Medeiros will be kicking it off, and the Durfee Hilltoppers will have their first possession. Brian Pacheco at about the 18-yard line. Pacheco to about the 28-yard line. That's a 10-yard return. 
New Bedford coming up with some pretty good pursuit there. 32 on the stop. Roberto Carter on the special teams, the senior, 5'10", 165 pounds. And John Preston, the other stopper, the sophomore. Let's take a look at Durfee on offense real quick if we can. Offensive line, Justin Carrero, Maniz Viveros, Almeida, and Oliveira. The backs and receivers, quarterback Peter Sunnison, halfback Brian and Steve Pacheco, no relation, tight end Mark Megna. And if they do put up the ball, Dorr and Norton are the wide receivers. First and 10 at the New Bedford, or at the Durfee 29-yard line, Brian Pacheco takes it over the right side of that line. Pickup of about a yard, perhaps. And it'll be a second down and nine. New Bedford defensively, one of our favorite guys who will be graduating, the little guy, the nose guy, Chris Gula. Brian Cardoza, Rich Ribeiro, defensive tackles, the ends, Madaris and Bernardo. And in the secondary, Jeff Correa and Jose Torado on the corners. Chris Gomes, TJ Godin, the linebackers, and the safeties, John Casey and Rudy Bulger. Rudy Bulger, the quarterback of the future, who threw that long pass before. This is Pacheco to the left, Steve. Steve can't make any headway to the left. And Brian Cardozo with the stop for New Bedford. So now number 42, Chris Gula, who stands at about five feet, five one. And he's graduating this year. Is he gonna grow much more, you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> gutsy, gutsy kid. And he's great, he's on every play, on every tackle. Key right now, offense, offense for New Bedford opening the lines, offense for Durfee not opening the lines. Door wide to the right. Pitch out to Pacheco to the left. Pacheco leaning forward, very close to the first down. May have it at the 39-yard line, depending on the ball spot. But a good job of running that time by Pacheco. See, Paul, that's just something that a lot of people don't discuss. They talk about the big play, the big, you know, the, the quarterback who, who throws the bomb and the running back who runs for two touchdowns and uh, 90 yards and all that. But you tend to never hear about the offensive line or the defensive line and that kind of play. And it is because of the play of an offensive line uh, to dominate the line of scrimmage uh, that really wins you a ball game, that can only win you a ball game. The protection, the, the open holes, all of that. Right now you have to look at who's going to dominate the uh, line of scrimmage when you're going to have a running game like this all day, and right now it's New Bedford who's doing it. Fourth down and one, Durfee is going for it. Sunnison forward, and Sunnison looks like he will have the first down at about the 40-yard line. Thought maybe he had it before that on the previous run, but Peter Sunnison has the first, first down of this drive for the Durfee Hilltoppers. So early in this game with 5.37 remaining, Paul, you would think that Bob Bogan would punt and give the ball back to New Bedford. I'm just wa wondering if, he's if he fears giving the ball to New Bedford uh, because he fears that, uh, that offensive attack and wants to keep the ball any way that he can. First and 10 at about the 40-yard line. Steve Pacheco, the halfback, crosses the 40-yard line to about the 42. It's good to see Durfee making that first down on four running plays, but... This two yards a pop really exactly. isn't going to cut it as far as marching all the way down to Painter. But you, you know, you talk to Bob Ogan and uh, he'll tell you we have to keep the ball away from New Bedford, uh, from their offense, and that's certainly a way to do so. With so much time remaining in this game at the 40 yard line, you'd think they'd punt and give it back. But that's Chad not the case. Swowers B wide to the right, but the handoff goes to Pacheco. That's Brian Pacheco, I believe, this time. This is easy, no matter who gets it, it's Pacheco. <laughs> but I think it may have been Steve that time. Regardless, they only barreled through for maybe another yard. It sets up another third and long for the Durfee Hilltoppers. They weren't able to convert that other third down conversion. They had to go to the fourth now. We'll see what they do here, third and seven. Again, Sowers B wide to the right. Wide to the left is Dory. Big handoff, Sunnison throws wide open, and the ball is caught at about the 44-yard line, driving forward, and he came very close to the first down marker. That was Mark Megna, the tight end, number 49. You gotta give him a lot of credit because he was one yard from the first down marker and he kept battling and battling. I don't know if he ever got the first. Not bad for uh, Peter Sennison to keep his composure with uh, the rush on him with the uh, blitz coming right into his face. Uh, he stood there in the pocket and just kind of let it go. Mark Megna, by the way, the key on offense at tight end, also the key on defense at linebacker. And there is the replay. And as you see, Sennison just stays there, sees the rush coming in, sees the blitz, and uh, kind of just lets it go. Or keeps his composure. Usually a guy that leaves the pocket. But just so it's a fourth down and one. Durfee will be going for it. Sunnison, same play, and he has the first down. 
That's a good job by the Durfee Hilltoppers on the fourth and short. They've done it twice, even when the ball was in their own territory. But as you said, they've got to keep the ball away from the Bedford. They've got to keep possession. And they've got to eat up the clock. And they've been doing all of the above. You have to like that play, that third down play, that pass play by uh, Senesin to uh, Megna. I mean, that was a nice play. And they're not a team, Durfee, that puts the ball up in the air all that much anyway. To do it in this kind of weather and have the confidence and complete it uh, you know, so dominatingly as they did it was really not, I mean, I think that's really, could, that could be the turnaround in an offensive attack. Quick handoff to the inside, 33, Steve Pacheco barreling forward. 55 on the stop for the New Bedford Whalers. That's Rich Ribera, the defensive tackle, 5'10", 240, the senior, making his last appearance in a high school game. That was a pretty good gain, about five yards this time, their biggest gain up the middle that we've seen. Or one of them. You think that both these coaches put a little bit of everything into this game? They, they can't really hold back. It's number one, the last game of the season for both teams, and uh, a rivalry that uh, can't really uh, be compared to. Kevin Costa, to wide to the right, but they hand it straight up the middle. A barrel forward by Brian Pacheco. He will be short of the first down. It'll set up another third down play. They will mark it about four yards short of the first down. I just wanted to point out, Kevin Costa was wide to the right. Bob Bogan told me that he was out with two hip pointers, but he's a gutsy player. He wants in there, the junior 5'7", 150. Kevin, one of their best, best athletes. He wants a piece of the action. Third down and four for Durfee. Pacheco is going to be hauled down from behind. And I think it's safe to say that uh, on the fourth down, they'll probably go for it again. <laughs> T.J. Grenard with the pursuit that time. Timeout for the Durfee Hilltoppers as they're facing their third successive fourth down situation. There you see the replay and Pacheco going nowhere on that third and three. And uh, like I said, do you feel that uh, you know these coaches will come out here? It's the last game of the season. It's a tremendous game between the two of them. It's been going on since, gosh, I asked a lot of the Hall of Famers, uh, New Bedford Hall of Famers, how long has this been going on? Uh, not just the Thanksgiving meeting, but that rivalry. And they said before <laughs> before we were around, it, it was going on. And so that, you know, coaches come out and throw just about everything they can at the opposing defenses and see what, what happens. And you know, on that Sunnison to uh, make the pass, that's something that you don't see, that you don't expect to see from the I think we should see more of it, too. I agree with It seems you. to me that, uh, you know, the Durfee Hilltoppers right. run the ball. New Bedford knows they're going to run the ball. And what happened when they sent Mecca out? Nobody was around. Right. Sunnison with the composure, a guy in his face. and uh, Fourth down and five with the New Bedford 41. Flags down. The Zebras discussing this one. And it is going to be a procedure penalty against the Durfee Hilltoppers. Well, that's going to hurt them because it's that going to really send them out of fourth and ten, and that's uh, in this kind of weather. Can't say impossible, certainly not impossible, but. Uh, Looks like they're going to punt the ball now. That's not a bad call. We might see a trick play. We've seen it before. <laughs> Pull it all out of your hat. It's the last game of the season. It's raining in. Hey, I'll tell you, a lot of fan support in this uh, this weather. We've got a lot of different kinds of umbrellas, I notice. Kind of a picture in itself, huh? So the Durfee Hilltoppers will be punting it away. Number five, Marcel Gonsalves back deep, along with 82, Jeff Correa. Moniz with the punt. Marcel Gonsalves at the 25. Marcel to the 40. Knocked down at about the 43-yard line. An 18-yard return from Marcel Gonsalves, a wide receiver at 5'8", 150-pound senior, someone they seem to throw to a little more a couple of years back. And he does a nice return there. New Bedford first and 10. And take a look at it again. It's a nice run back. Uh had a lot of Durfee Hilltoppers right up on him, but uh, no fair catch. First and 10, New Bedford at the 36-yard line. This will be the second time that New Bedford has the ball. A 75-yard drive resulting in a JoJo Grenine touchdown. The ball is loose. Durfee would love to pick the ball up right here. 
looks like Matt Trahan fell on his own fumble, setting up a second down at 11. And that's what Durfee needs. They need a mistake by New Bedford and soon. Well, that big uh, that play, the uh, five-yard penalty on the fourth and five when they were going for Durfee, that was a really big turnaround. It really stalled a real good offensive uh, uh, possession. They were moving the football well, and that uh, kind of just stalled them. That, that could be a key play because they were capitalizing. Second down and 11. Matt Trahan, your quarterback, dropping left, looking. That's Correa, Correa with the catch. Correa down the sideline. He has a shot at the end zone. And he is going to be knocked down at about the 25 yard line as he stepped just beyond the out of bounds line. Great catch though by Correa. And you can see how quick he can accelerate down the sideline. Oh, there's no stopping a Jeff Correa when he's on his game. Uh, you talked about uh, last week the Brockton 27 7 loss. And a hold against New Bedford will wipe that gain out. Right there, he went out. Forced out of bounds by Rick Palumbo, number 45. And there you see how hard it is raining. Camera picks it up on the field there. A holding call, bringing that back. And we'll get that call in just a second. And who was that on, Paul? Didn't quite catch who it was on. I think it happened back at the offensive line. But that sets up a second down and very long, second down and 21 in New Bedford's 26. And this is where the Durfee defense really has to come up big here. New Bedford's so capable of just gaining 20 yards that even in this situation, you can't be too worried. You gotta have a lot of confidence from the red and white point of view. Matt Trahan, hand off to Jojo Gooday. Look at the room, he's got up the middle. Almost slips, breaks it past the 40, and Gooday's gonna go all the way. Touchdown, 74 yards. And it's 12 nothing, New Bedford. Well, just when you think the Durfee Hilltoppers catch a break, just when you think they could hold New Bedford back, get the ball back with pretty good field position, with some good defense. Here you see it, Jojo Gadine cuts in the middle, sees an open hole, goes to his left, down the sideline, 74 yards for the second touchdown of this day for that young man, number 30, with his ninth touchdown of the year. And <laughs> All the Durfee Hilltopper fans can do right now, Paul, is sigh. <laughs> that's, that's really tough when you have a team pinned in that situation. Second down and long, everybody thinking pass. Now here goes this formation again, everybody off to the right. <laughs> and Rudy Bulger is headed to the end zone, passes two-point conversion complete to Jeff Correa. Jeff Correa with the conversion and it's 14-0 New Bedford in, in that situation. How do you stop that? I don't. I think you put everybody <laughs> right, right on top of the ball. Quarterback, huh? right. I mean, give the quarterback no time to throw and, and having to make and create a play by himself. Does that have a name or what? I don't, I've never seen it. Uh, <laughs> the Patriots could use it. That would be a nice Scott Zolik. Uh, See, I don't you know. know if, you know, if you line up opposite <laughs> the ball, original. maybe the quarterback just takes it and throws to all the, uh, well, obviously all the, play, the receivers. The play is there. designed, certainly, for Bolger to throw the ball. I mean, you know, that's why you put the uh, defensive uh, line on top of the ball, give Bolger nobody to throw to because there's no time, and make him create the play himself. So with 29 seconds left, New Bedford up 14 to nothing, and we'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll have to ask Wayne Hamlet about that after the game. I wonder if Bob Bogan has seen that before, because we've done New Bedford <laughs> games and we haven't seen that before. How do you decide where to line up? Well, that's the thing. We're, because we're there's a center it. all by himself with well, the ball. Exactly. Why don't they just like line up on top of him? I but I'm know. sure Bob Bogan is saying a lot easier said than done, you know? <laughs> oh, sure. He's standing out there <laughs> saying, what the heck is going right. on? I don't know. OK, so. Corey Medeiros will be kicking off from his own 40-yard line. As we said, 29 seconds left here in the first quarter. Durfee needing a big run back here. Trying to get back into the football game. Chris Gula to the near side of your screen there. Wrapping up his season as New Bedford's nose guard and his career. Ground ball kick. It dies at about the 12, picked up by Brian Pacheco. Pacheco puts his head down. Gains about seven yards on the return, knocked down at the Durfee Hilltopper 18 yard line where the Hilltoppers will take over first and 10 for their second drive. Great special teams coverage on that uh, kick and that was a good uh, kick also. Keep it on the ground. It's real hard to 
handle the ball. It's so wet and, you know, you see if you can perhaps induce some kind of a turnover or fumble on that. See, right there, the replay and keep it on the ground and uh, prevent the uh, receiving team from any big yardage. Pete Sonnison on the rollout. Sonnison keeps. Dives forward, forced out of bounds by T.J. Gooden. Minimal gain at best. Corey Medeiros also there as one of the New Bedford stoppers. Last year's uh, loss, Durfee loss to New Bedford. The 18 points that uh, Durfee scored last year, Paul, was the first time in five games that Durfee found the end zone, the New Bedford end zone. So uh, that 33-18 New Bedford win, that was a good game last year. I think one of the better games that we've seen between these two teams in quite a while. And it's second down and 10 for Durfee at their own 17-yard line. Pitch out to Pacheco. Pacheco barreling forward. Ball is loose. And the New Bedford Whalers recover. Chris Gomes. And number 56, Jonathan Snow on the huge hit for New Bedford. And that was a defensive play. That hit created the ball to come loose. But Chico couldn't hold on. And we'll see the replay. We'll see exactly who got either a helmet in or an arm in to try to knock that uh, ball loose. Not going well for Durfee. We have 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And Durfee on the verge of going down by three scores. And that's hard to come back from, not only when you're playing a great New Bedford team or a very good New Bedford team, but when you're playing a team in this, uh, with these weather conditions. 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Jeff Carrere in motion. Jojo Gerdine gets the handoff, taken all the way to about the 10 yard line. First quarter about to come to an end here. And the first quarter is history. New Bedford leading 14 to nothing. We'll be back with more in a moment. Back at Paul Walsh Field. All set to begin the second quarter. New Bedford up 14 to nothing on two touchdown runs by Jojo Gernine and Corey Medeiros. The other senior coming in to quarterback the New Bedford Whalers was the starter last year. Sharik Mendes. Mendes slips and falls down. <laughs> just inside the 10 yard line. I'm sure they want to see Sharik Mendes get on the board. He's got eight touchdowns coming into today's game. Now, I know you had Jojo with eight. And Sharik with seven, but you say it's the opposite. It's the other way around. That's right. That's the way we had it at the Brockton game, so okay. I know they didn't score. And there goes Sharik on the replay. <laughs> and look who's in the backfield, Chris Gula. <laughs> Am I wrong or am, I mean, I, I think you're I'm right. right. <laughs> Ball is loose. It's very hard to see down in the field with the weather as it is. Everything is kind of fogging up and people keep breathing. I keep telling them not to breathe and they keep fogging the windows because they breathe too much. And That's going to set up why a. Not, uh, why not blame uh, your blindness on the foggy windows, right? Yeah, I have good excuses today. We've got two right. Pachicos in the Durfee backfield, so no matter who gets the ball, we can just say Pachico. And then we can always use the rain and the fog as an excuse. Actually, the fog is gone. The rain just kind of wiped the fog away. Fourth down and two. Corey Medeiros keeps, dives forward. He looks like he will have the first down. Now, Matt Trahan's on the sideline. He looks like he's okay. I just wonder why they took him out. Do you think it has to do I, with the lead or? I think it has to do with that it's the last game of the year for both of these players, last game of their high school careers. And so Matt Trahan was in there and gave the Corey a chance. Right. Corey Medeiros is a great young man, too. He knew that he, what he was up against. He knew he had a real good uh, shot at uh, uh, you know winning the starting job. He also knew he was up against Matt Trahan, who is a fine quarterback just the same and it was really a you know a, a, just a square off both had a chance Very of close. winning it and yeah. he just came out ahead Matt Trahan has done a great job quick handoff inside Gula Chris Gula the senior nose guard carrying the ball straight up the middle that's a situation where your defensive line especially your linebackers jump towards the line of scrimmage grab the guy running with you know who's handling the football and misses Chris Gula. Grab air there. 
And the Where different Hilltoppers call timeout. <laughs> As you saw Corey Madera's coming to the sidelines and you get a look at the great weather conditions that we have here at Paul Walsh Field and everybody is prepared between the umbrellas and plastic bags and <laughs> even those cheap Channel 13 coats. Is she that something we have else? <laughs> This is not cheap, Paul. Huh? Just because of the uh, label, the lo logo <laughs> keeps falling off when yeah, it only, rains. Yeah, only when it gets a wreck. That's why it's a raincoat. That's what I can't figure out. <laughs> no. You would think oh that boy. it would fall off in the sun, oh, but no, it falls off in the rain. That's well, what the way do you, it works. Hey, you, you want everything? <laughs> you got a nice looking yellow coat. What do you think it should contain the water, or, or rather keep the water out as well? I have just a great the water. deal of pride wearing this coat. I'm sure you do. I just couldn't yeah. wait to put it on this morning. <laughs> Actually, I was hoping I didn't have to wear it because I was hoping it would be sunny and that the weather channel would be wrong. The only Which time it's it wrong. Which usually is. <laughs> yeah, it's only wrong when they say it's going to be sunny and it rains. <laughs> but when they say it rains, it's never wrong to be sunny. See, that's what we're... <laughs> Wayne Hamlet on the sidelines. Inside handoff. Touchdown, Sharik Mendes. Great play. <laughs> and put 20 up on the board for New Bedford. Touchdown number nine for Sharik Mendes, Chris Gula, the blocker. He really does nothing. everything. So that's a 16-yard drive. Did you see how uh, Mendes just, we saw the replay right there, jumps over the uh, line of scrimmage <laughs> like a high jumper. A lot of athleticism on the side of New Bedford. We have New Bedford unofficially, and when I say unofficially, underline it. With eight first downs and Durfee with two, give you an idea. And we'll give you the total yardage in a second. It's Corey Medeiros kicking the ball. And Corey puts it up the middle, 21-0 New Bedford. So that was about, what, three-yard run? Yeah, give it, give it about three yards, Paul. <laughs> yes, it was. Three-yard run by Mendes. Ninth touchdown of the season. One zip the Whalers. And it's raining in New Bedford. It's raining on Durfee at the same time. When it rains, it pours, says Bob Hogan. They got off to a pretty good start, Durfee. They lost a couple of games, but could have easily won. Then they won their first, and they were uh, they were at one and two, and looked like they could uh, be a pretty good team, one of the better Durfee teams of uh, the past. And, they went ahead and just kind of fell apart. Blowout after blowout towards the last half of the season. The teams didn't take him as seriously as we would think they would have with that quick start or that, that decent start. Right now, the New Bedford Whalers, in terms of total yardage, outgaining the Durfee Hilltoppers 156 to 23. And that gives you an idea of what's going on out there. Even when Durfee had the ball, their best Movement of the ball was 23 yards from their own 28 to the New Bedford 49 yard line on their first drive, but then on the second drive, they fumbled it at their own 17. Ground ball kick bounces over one player, and number 30 of the Durfee Hilltoppers, Mike Rogers, who generally plays cornerback on the Durfee defense, falls on the football. New Bedford will take over, rather, Durfee will at their own 32 yard line. Third time Durfee has the ball. You think that a team would have to change their game plan when they're down 21 nothing in the second. But really, how do you change a, a game plan when you got weather like this and uh, you're not a team that puts the ball up in the air? You don't uh, compile a whole lot of yardage that way, and you're certainly not going to try too much of that when the ball's so wet and soggy and, you know, your footing is not there and it's continuing to rain. So you just have to kind of stick, I guess, with the game plan. Hand off. Pacheco, pretty decent gain, about seven yards. TJ, good eye on the stop, second down Durfee. What do you do, you know, if you're Bob Hogan? It's such a right. difficult spot to be in. You're down by three touchdowns. It's only the second quarter, or only a couple of minutes into the second quarter, and as we take a look at that replay, the game is pretty much over. Even at this early, it's just very tough. In fact, uh, the Dartmouth game, Dartmouth was up 21-0, and Bob Hogan's quote was, what are you doing? You're down 21-0, I don't know. Very tough. One of the Pachicos. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't see, the, now you're in big trouble, Paul, because no, you I'm can't see say. anyway, and now you can't <laughs> see the numbers with the mud all over the white jersey. It was Steve Pacheco. 
You have to look at the monitor. See right there. That's right. Eight the minutes. handheld cameraman's got to zoom in. <laughs> Help you out a little bit. I think I think the answer to that is what do you do? You just stick with your game. You stick with what you do best. You figure you have time. You have two and a half quarters to go. And as just as, as easily as New Bedford scored 21, you can too with a couple of uh, miscues so on, uh, on the opposing offense. So you stick with what you do best. Third down and two. Brian Pacheco pounding and pounding. He's very, very close to the marker, but I don't think he got it. Not from our angle, anyway. Let's see where they spot the ball. And they did get the first down. Okay. The third first down of the game for the Hilltoppers as they try to establish something here late in the second quarter. Two big games this year that uh, New Bedford played, one against number three seeded Severian and then of course the top seeded Brockton. They lost both, but both were close and after this play we'll tell you what those scores were and how indeed they did lose. First and 10 at the Durfee 42. Sunnison holding, Gula in pursuit, dives, can't get him. That's a gain of about five yards past the 45, flags on the play late. It's gonna be a late hit. No, it isn't. And it's some yes, kind it of a is. clip. I, I, I missed. I missed the signal. Did you see the signal? Well, I, I, it, it was. It was a clip, but uh, I'd say that it was on that late hit there. It was a late hit by, uh, and I couldn't see who it was in traffic there. But watch this now. Sunnison's out of bounds right now. I didn't see a late hit. Did you? Personal foul, automatic first down. And, uh, I don't know what kind of. I don't know what. I didn't see the foul. Did you? On the sideline there. It, it looked like he was out of bounds and then he got hit. Well, I mean, that's the only thing I could come up with was a late hit, but. So we take a look at uh, the Severian game. It was a 29-24 New Bedford loss. And I'll tell you, New Bedford up 24-15 in the fourth. You went to that game in the fourth. Mm -hmm. Must have been a great uh, fourth quarter to watch. And then Brockton's 27-7 loss, or rather New Bedford's loss to Brockton, 27-7. Now, you did the game. You called that game. And Brian Pacheco barreling forward to the enemy 33-yard line, gain of about seven yards. Yeah, New Bedford was behind 14 to nothing in the first half. They scored a touchdown late, thanks to Jeff Correa. Jeff Correa took a kickoff, ran it 45 yards to the enemy 45, as we take a look at that nice run by Durfee. Then a quick pass from Trey to Correa. They were down to the three, and then they barreled in. But before that, there was a pass to Jeff Correa in that was batted zone. down by Jacques Picard, and uh, that really hurt. And if you ask Correa about that, he'll say they didn't get a hand on the ball. He just missed it. Is that right? That's what he says. You spoke to him about I it? I spoke to Wayne Hamlet about it, and that's what... Because uh, it looks like, he, on the replay, it looks like he had him, and the kid swung at it. I, I saw the play of the week, which is like that play. And you mean he never like touched him? Correa <laughs> said, well, Correa, it looked like it, but Correa says the, the ball was not touched, that uh, Picard did not touch the football. He simply dropped it. And that's something, to say that, to come out, that was a really yeah, right. big turning point in the game. It would have been a tie game at that point, and a whole new ball game at that, at that and time. And I made that the play of the week, well, and Picard did nothing. That's what you're saying. Well, he got, you know, certainly he, uh, he you know, obstructed at yeah. the, uh, you know, but the, the thing is for Korea to come out and say that. I yeah, mean, he could have he could have easily hit behind absolutely. the play of the week there, but he didn't do that. He's that good of a player, though. He doesn't miss too many. And that's going to be a first down for the Durfee Hilltoppers <laughs> at about the New Bedford 27-yard line. So that's the second first down of this drive. Drive that began at their own 32-yard line, so the Durfee Hilltoppers are moving the ball pretty good here. On that one big penalty, but uh, again, that I couldn't see what happened on that penalty. We thought it looked like a late hit. Uh, you spoke about Jeff Carrera a second ago. Yeah. Boy, is he going to be missed, huh? Not only Four-year starter. He, he, I think he has the potential, a little bit small, but uh, you know, I think he has the potential of being a superstar in the future somewhere. Brian Pacheco. Crosses the 25-yard line to about the 23. Durfee could have done this on their first drive. They wouldn't be behind by three. They're really moving the ball nicely here against the New Bedford defense. Key penalty on a third and five, moving him back five yards, or rather a fourth and five. They were gonna go for it at that, at that time. It was only six nothing and they were driving. And that penalty moved him to fourth and 10 and uh, Bogan, uh, Decided to uh, kick the ball away, punt the ball away, and I think it was a turning point. Second down and six. And New Bedford throws it for a huge loss. Number 28, John Casey. Pins him back five yards, and they're farther back than they were when they started. It's about a 10-yard loss, all the way back to the 31-yard line. 
So a third and 13 now for the Durfee Hilltoppers. And when it rains, it pours. <laughs> I think they ought to, like, throw another short pass to Mark Mecca. Well, Peter Sennison looks like he can complete the, the pass. I mean, he's only a junior, and he's getting better and better. And, uh, you know, again, you're right. They've executed the pass play. You see a timeout here on third and 13. Durfee going to regroup and see what they're going to do about this. This is a big play here, third and 13. You don't get it. What do you do? You obviously go for it uh, when you're inside uh, New Bedford territory. You're not going to, you can't go for a field goal, <laughs> certainly. And you're certainly not going to punt the ball. So hey, this is a two play down right here, or rather a two play. Uh, two play down. What is a two play down? <laughs> oh, you said that in the other game. I don't know what that is. What is that? It's my way of saying. Four down territory? <laughs> a two play possession. <laughs> It's a four. It's, it's a, a it's four down it's territory. Right. Exactly. I don't think you Here can Here it's do, two down. Well, actually, you can't have a two play down. That's right. like the halfback option. That's right. a two play down. Right. It's a pitch out and a and pass. That, so exactly. It's two plays and one down. Two play possession. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Rewriting the Another football word. playbook here. And look <laughs> at the mud, huh? Do you know what I mean, though? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It's third and 13, but they go for the fourth. So they have two plays here on, on this. Uh, I can be your translator. <laughs> you know, in court, they have translators. Well, you speak, and then I'll translate, all right? Whole new I'm set not. of downs, and uh, it's a two down, <laughs> two down, down. It's a two down, down. Two down, down. Yeah. That's a, we can make that into a song. <laughs> hmm. Two plays to convert the first. They've got two tries. <laughs> Third down and 13 at the New Bedford 30-yard line. Sonnison throws and it's picked off by T.J. Goodine at the 20-yard line. Goodine on the move, still on his feet. Knocked down at the 45-yard line. And Durfee recovers the fumble. The ball was fumbled. <laughs> Pacheco, Steve, falls on the fumble. There's the play of the week. That's a great play in a game what? like this. First of all, you can't. Going on out Durfee's so dirty, it looked like there they look like from here they're got red jerseys on. Take a look at it again right here. Okay, well the not a bad throw, but a great pickoff right there by TJ Gadine. That was actually a good throw by Simpson. Now he takes it about 40 yards on the return, fumbles the ball with it when the hand is it uh, number 99 on, on Durfee. That's uh, Eric, Silva. Eric Silva gets a hand and knocks it down and Great play by him. It's Durfee. What is Durfee doing all the way back there? <laughs> well, just think, they're keeping the ball away from New Bedford. Pacheco carries past the 50 to about the 47-yard line. So Second guess, down and seven. I guess Gadine gets the uh, interception on that. So there was something good out of that play. For New Bedford, I, 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 very good for Durfee. That wasn't a bad throw, by the way, by Sennison. It was a great pickoff by Gadine. He got up and one-handed it, and uh, he had an open man, Sennison, right inside. Sonnison rolling left, has some time, throws, and it's incomplete to the near side. Pass intended for Chad Swowersby. Someone they look to often in that in that uh, type of a play, uh, Kevin Costa, the junior slot back, also fills in for at quarterback, also plays some pretty good defense. And uh, as you said, Costa, a very good athlete. When Sunnison went down in the Dartmouth game with a shoulder injury, it was Costa who came in the next couple of games and uh, sort of engineered that offense. They didn't win a game in that time, but uh, Costa's a, a great all-around athlete. This is going to pin them all the way back. Didn't catch the uh, signal and illegal block. This really pins them back. Second down and 22 at the 39-yard line. Steve Pacheco with the handoff. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. 72 on the stop for the Bedford Whalers. Brian Cardoza, the defensive tackle. Another senior, six feet, 220 pounds. He's done a great job on the line, both offensively and defensively, over the past three seasons for the Whalers. Well, Durfee uh, has, we've seen them beat themselves today. That's the one thing you don't want to do, especially in a big rivalry. There's so many ways to lose a ball game, Paul. And the one thing you don't want to do, and I'm sure Wayne Hamlin is telling his guys right now, don't lose the game. Don't defeat yourself. 
See, I see him saying that right there. I see him yelling at his defense. <laughs> Kevin Costa on the reverse. Costa dives forward. That's a pretty decent gain, but when you got to cover about 20 yards. Right. Jeff Carrera on the stop for New Bedford. Timeout <laughs> on the field by New Bedford. Costa, one of the only remaining white jerseys remaining uh, on the side of Durfee, number 28 there. <laughs> number 28 uh, who was not on the roster for Durfee. Of course, that happens to us all of the time. Do you think they'll let us do a post-game show? Uh, I don't know if I'll let you do a post-game <laughs> show. I'm not sure about going out. Chris Gomes speaking to Wayne Hammer. Chris Gomes, the heart and soul of the New Bedford defense, the linebacker position. He's only a junior at six feet, 220 pounds. And just to show you how long I've been doing this, Chris Gomes used to play on the junior high team. I did this junior high story about three years ago or four years ago. And Chris, not too long. Chris huh? Gomes was the big star on the team. Now here he is a junior, and he'll be out of here before I know it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Durfee Hilltoppers punting Maniz from his own 35-yard line. Marcel Gonsalves at the 32. Gonsalves trying to stay on his feet. Knocked out of bounds at about the 43-yard line, an 11-yard return for Marcel, and he's done a nice job on the punt return so far for New Bedford. I think what makes great highlight film is just watching any running play at all and seeing these guys them slip and slide in the dirty uniforms. And I mean, this is great stuff here. This is classic, don't you think? Classic. Classic. There's the punt again. Marcel Gonzalez just wanting to hold on to the ball. Does a good job keeping his footing, was tripped up, but. Uh... So the New Bedford Whalers take over first and 10 at about their own 43 yard line. Fumble. Trayan picks it up and goes forward. Gains about three yards on that. That's pretty good when you can gain three yards on a fumble. Two minutes left in the first half. New Bedford on the two-minute drill. Correa throws, has T.J. Goodine. Goodine trying to get out of bounds, and he does at about the 46-yard line. The New Bedford Whalers looking like they want to put up another score before halftime. It's kind of tough when you're on a roll like New Bedford is, and a lot of these kids are seniors, and it is their last game. It's kind of hard to hold back the dogs. New Bedford certainly does have a lot of weapons. I think that they're, you know, I like Corey Medeiros, and there we see uh, like Chris, Chris Gula, Gula. too. <laughs> look at him. Boy, look, at, look at his face. <laughs> what is, what's that? He, 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 looks, he looks meaner <laughs> with a helmet off. It is not Halloween, Chris. I mean, what, was he oh, trying to keep the sun out or something? <laughs> yeah, that might have been mud. Oh, I don't know what it was. I've never seen mud that black. <laughs> <laughs> He put it on, <laughs> looked like under his eyes. You're right, it looks like what the baseball players used to put under their eyes in order to reflect the sun away. But why would he have that on today? I, I tell you, he says, listen, I might be short, but I'm mean. Mm. He's a good player. We'll have to see if we can get an interview <laughs> after the game. Oh, boy. You can do that one. I'd like to interview him. He's, he's something else. And there you see the rain, how hard it's coming down here on the track on the near side of the football field, and a lot of the stopped. folks have come down. They look happy, smiling. They're troopers. It's Thanksgiving. They know they're going home, taking a quick shower, and having the meal of the year, so. Baseball caps and umbrellas, the rule of the day. What you having for Thanksgiving? <laughs> I mean, Squad. I, are you? <laughs> no, what do you think what? I'm having? <laughs> well, I mean, I want, is there anything special? Some people, you know, there's always turkey, turkey but there's always. Well, it's tur turkey. And then there's I know that sounded foolish, Paul, but you know what I mean. Great dessert made by the wife there. See, so it was a legitimate question. She's making it last night. I'm going to have McDonald's on my way home. Jeff Correa, wide to the left. Good eye is thrown for a loss back at his own 40-yard line. That's one of the better penetrating penetrations, uh, one of the better defensive penetration. So, Donna, you have a long drive home to New Jersey right after this football game. Very long. The replay, as we said. Ooh. New Bedford opening the lines and creating the holes, dominating the line of scrimmage all day. That was the first time, or the, the best times that Durfee did it defensively, and that's what happens. I think that was Mike Maniz, one of the guys in on the tackle. The fake punt. Joe Joe Gernard around the side. Gernard has a first down and more. 
Knocked out of bounds at about the Durfee 40. And once again, a key block. We'll see that once again. You can't get to gain big yardage unless your offensive team or defensive team at that time, your comrades do the blocking for you and uh, doesn't get a whole lot of glory and accolade, but the big block makes the big play and we see it again. There is the, well, everyone was fooled as the camera person was fooled as well, but uh, what happened there was the, the ball was snapped. Trayan back in there quarterbacking. Has been throughout this whole drive. Throws, has Correa! Correa leaped up, had it for a moment, but has drops it at about the 12 yard line. Spinning in midair, trying to bring the football in. This is our last look at Fu. Why are they and calling Fu for? What, what, why is that uh, his nickname? <laughs> You know, I, in four years, I don't know. We'll try to find out after the game if they let us do a post game. There we show. see it. Not, not uh, pretty good by Pacheco right there on the, uh, see, on we, the coverage. We called him Fufu the freshman. Fufu the freshman. And then he was a sophomore, and I was still calling him Fufu the freshman by mistake the whole year. It took two years <laughs> for that to wear off. Oh, and here we go. With that weird <laughs> formation, and it will be Bolger who'll get the snap. And Bolger. Looking to throw. Fires has T.J. Goodine at the 25-yard line. Goodine knocked down at the 22-yard line. Now what and that's another first down, New Bedford. What bothers me about this play, Paul, is this is the third time that New Bedford tried this weird kind of ensemble type of offensive setup and lineup and whatever you call it. but. Uh, I don't know why there shouldn't be a, I, I don't. All right, Matt Trayan, one more play here, if we can squeeze it in. Matt Trayan throws, has Correa. Touchdown, Jeff Correa. Touchdown reception number eight on the year. And it's 27 nothing New Bedford. Ball come rain, come shine, come slush, come mud, come snow, come hail. The New Bedford Whalers unable to get the extra point, so they will have to settle. Can I say that? Settle for 27 <laughs> to nothing. New Bedford, 28 seconds to go. That's what you said, here by the, the way. First half. You said 28 to nothing. I mean 27, excuse but, me. But I mean, They're settling for 27. You, uh, you recalled, you said it's going to be 28 nothing uh, at the half, and I said, nah. Then <laughs> I was I'll, off by one. I'll tell you. You can't stop the combination of Trahan to Korea. That was a beautifully thrown ball. Now, the play, two plays before when Trahan went up to Korea and that, uh, you know, Korea had to stop. It was a little bit underthrown and he had to, he, the ball was batted down. It looked like by Pacheco. That was not a, one of Matt Trahan's better throws because, again, that was a little bit underthrown in Korea. That would have been an outrageous, miraculous catch if he didn't make that catch. This was a perfectly executed play. Corner of the end zone, perfect throw, perfect catch. Korea's always in the right place at the right time, and he's always where he's supposed to be. You said it, and uh, I agree with you. They're really going to miss Jeff Korea, as you call him Fufu, whatever the heck that means. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're going to really miss him next year. They've got other people there that they can throw to and go to, but <laughs> I'll tell you, Trahan Korea, something to be remembered. And the ball is picked up by the Durfee Hilltoppers on the ground ball kick. And what set up that play, by the way, Paul. Excuse me, Mike there. Rogers got the ball there. Just trying to figure that out. It's hard number to see 30. the numbers at this point, yeah. and you have to kind of bear with us at this at this time. It's hard to see uh, when you don't do the game today. Check it out again. He just fell on it. That's the thing to do. And you can't, you, really, you can't tell what, there it is. Mike Rogers down there. And so as, as we're going back to that touchdown, the play that the previous play, the play that set that play up was that funky uh, formation. You know, formation with Bolger at the at the helm and uh, uh, the Durfee not able to defend that. Uh, three times uh, came up with big plays. Steve Pacheco the carry this time, gain of about two yards. It looks like it might be the last play of the half. As the clock winds down, five seconds, four seconds. And the first half is over. The New Bedford Whalers comfortably out in front by a score of 27 to nothing. 
Two touchdown runs by Judge Jurgenine, one of 15 yards, one of 74 yards. A touchdown run by Sharik Mendes from three yards out and an 18-yard touchdown pass. Matt Trahan to Jeff Correa, 27-0 New Bedford. We'll be back with second half action from Walsh Field in New Bedford in a moment. Back at Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford, we are about ready to start the second half. The New Bedford Whalers out in front by a score of 27 to nothing. Taking a look at the halftime statistics, Durfee actually holding on to the ball longer than New Bedford, ironically, 1357 to 803. But you take a look at the rushing yardage, all New Bedford, 177 to 55. Passing, New Bedford is four out of six for 48 yards. Durfee is one for three, six yards. Total yardage, New Bedford 225, Durfee 61. And penalties, each team has been penalized three times. New Bedford for 30 yards, Durfee for 20 yards, each team with five first downs. As far as the scoring is concerned, the leading rusher, no surprise, is Jojo Gadine. Eight carries for 145 oh yards. And Donna, he's getting very close to a milestone. That's right, 25 yards away from 1,000 yards on the season. He will do it today, there's no doubt about that, with two quarters left to go. And I wonder, uh, you've been with, you know, covering these games even longer than I, and you've seen Jojo Gadine uh, longer than I have. And will this indeed be his first 1,000 yard game, or rather year, in his career? I believe so. Last year he was just a freshman, and I don't think he met that plateau. Can, now, can you imagine as a sophomore <laughs> what he's going to do in the next couple of years? He'll probably break just about all the rushing uh, marks. Uh, I mean, considering that uh, this weekend, or that this week rather, I. Uh, interviewed Dave Ritchie, who was uh, was inducted into the New Bedford Hall of Fame, Football Hall of Fame, and uh, graduated in 1930. Uh, real neat guy, and he ran for over for uh, over a thousand yards in both his junior and senior years. And I'm not so sure that uh, there's a whole lot of people who will, if he does run to this year, next year, and in his senior year for over a thousand yards, if that has ever been done in New Bedford history. A lot of optimism, of course, as you pointed out, for New Bedford in the near future. Both Jojo Gadine and Sharik Mendes, the starting halfback and fullback, are both sophomores, both will have two more very productive years in New Bedford High without question. And you saw Rudy Bulger throw the ball a couple of times with that wild formation. Scramble right, scramble left. What we call it a garbage right and a garbage left too sometimes. But anyway, he threw the ball a couple of times and you can see where he's got quite a bit of potential. So the next couple of years at New Bedford, Looks like the football team will be in pretty good shape. Doing a little bit of research on that garbage play, which is what they call it, the play where Bolger gets the uh, snap uh, from center. Actually, the snap is coming from an eligible wide receiver. That's what right. they actually do is they're setting up the quarterback and the center in the wide receiver position. Mm -hmm. So the person who is snapping the football is actually an eligible receiver. Yep. Meanwhile, the rest of the offensive line are on the other side of the field. Uh, rather the other end of the field is uh, with wise and they're set up as just a regular line of scrimmage would be set up so very interesting how do you uh, contain a bold bulger in that situation uh, there is a way but bob Bogan hasn't figured that out yet Corey madera's all set to kick off from his own 40 yard line play 11 minute quarters in the big three so this game will go four minutes longer <laughs> looks like an onside kick I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but the Derby Hilltoppers recover it at about their own 47-yard line. The New Bedford Whalers score is so far with 7.02 to go in the first quarter, a 15-yard run by Jojo Gadine. With 29 seconds left in the first, the 74-yard run by Jojo Gadine. Touchdowns number eight and nine on the season. And in the second quarter with 8.54 to go, a three-yard run by Sharik Mendes, his ninth TD. And with 28 seconds left, Matt Traham. 18-yard touchdown pass to Fu Carrera's eighth touchdown reception of the year. Brian Pacheco carrying past the 50-yard line. The Bedford defense pounding on the inside, and we see some substitutions in there. For New Bedford, Jason Gomes, the senior on defense in there. Also, uh, D. Consacio, also a senior, at defensive back. So Wayne Hamlet emptying the bench, understandably so. Last game of the season, give them all a chance to play. I think that's a good idea. Second down and eight for Durfee, ball at midfield. Sonnison throws, <laughs> and the ball is caught. 
<laughs> Great catch. Oh, the receiver was sitting on the ground when he hauled the ball in. And it looks like it was Steve Pacheco, number 33. Now, can you believe or can you imagine what the Derby Hilltopper receiving core can do if they stay on their feet? Can you imagine the passing accuracy? <laughs> Third down and three for the Durfee Hilltoppers as this Thanksgiving Mud Bowl continues. Steve Pacheco, Brian Pacheco in the backfield. One of the Pacheco's carries for a first down. Durfee's sixth first down at the New Bedford 40-yard line. And at this point, you can't even see the numbers on the jerseys of any of the Hilltoppers that are currently out on the field. Uh, well, I never know who's carrying the ball anyway, so this is, we're par who, for the course here. Who you're, who you're up to? Huh? I got the who contact lenses down. all cleaned. Come in here, figure I'm not going to blow any carry today. Be the first time in history that we've actually said who's carrying the ball every time with 100% accuracy. And, that would and we be, get the mud bowl. That's right. <laughs> Pachico. I think that's Steve, and it is. Past the 40 to about the 39. Chris Gula making the stop for New Bedford. Now I was downstairs in the rain uh, getting some hot chocolate. Yeah, why did you do that? Oh, I, I needed something hot. I go down there, I go to get my hot chocolate. I, I have this umbrella somebody lent me that only half of it is, and the other half is all ripped, and people are making fun of me. So I'm trying to fix my umbrella. My hot chocolate fell all over somebody. People are actually making fun of you? Well, they, they were making fun of my umbrella, and then they were making fun of you. <laughs> They figured I would tell you. Wide to the left goes Chad Sowersby in the second down and eight. Loose ball, and New Bedford, I believe, falls on it. They're struggling for it. Richard Lopes is there, along with Louis Arruda. And, and it, it looks like New Bedford falls on the loose ball. Just what Durfee didn't need. I guess with 8.43 remaining in the third, 27 to nothing score, there's really not too much hope for Durfee as far as winning the game, but they would like to score a couple of times and show respected uh, and respective fans that, uh, yes, they can play. They can play with the best of them. So now, there I am, and I get my hot chocolate, and I'm finally, I, I drop it. Now I can't wait to get back up, and I close my umbrella, and I'm just getting soaked, and I see our cameraman. I want to tell him something about that quick play. I wanted to tell him to zone in on something I was interested in for him to do if they do do that again. And Corey Medeiros now quarterbacking, picks up his own fumble, flags on the play behind the play. Corey <laughs> carries for a first down, penning the flag at the 50-yard line. And it's a hold against New Bedford, so that's coming back anyway. The hold happened right after Corey picked up his own fumble and started to sprint to the left. Take a look at it again. All right, well, the ball's dropped. He picks it up immediately, and the hold's on number 51 right there. He's actually on top of his... Uh, Craig Espinola. That's right, of the... Uh, Look like the tackle, the defensive tackle. But uh, so anyway, so now there I am, and I'm walking back up, and there's Manny, and I'm going to tell him what I wanted him to do, or asked him something, and I scream Manny, and I scream Manny. About 50 people turned around and had what? <laughs> 50 or 60. I had every single. Every everybody Manny turned around. Called. Good thing you didn't say, "Hey Santos," and everybody <laughs> would have turned around. Okay, there's an injured player on the field, unfortunately, for the Durfee Hilltoppers, I believe. That may have been Bob Bogan right in the middle working on the player. <clears throat> Hopefully he's not injured too badly. We can get you don't want to see that. anybody injured on Thanksgiving Day, last game of the year, any game really. Well, there's some good news. He is hopping off the field. They did pick him up off the field and take him. Looks like they'll work on him on the uh, sideline there. Wish we could get a shot of that. See who it is. <laughs> and there's a shot of the sideline. Look at the mud. I'll tell you, it's just under. Don't you just feel like ground. diving right in there? Especially there's nothing like a great big shower. Okay, and that was Kevin Costa, by the way, the injured player who had two hip pointers coming in. Jojo Goodine on the carry. Has 10 yards, and he could be gone. He's going to carry it in, but it looks like the play's coming back. <laughs> well, not only, did that, not, not only would that have been his 10th touchdown of the year, he would have gone over 1,000 yards by about 50, to have been at about 1,050 yards, and they would have been on top 35 or something, what have you. Meanwhile, that will come back, so that will negate the touchdown. There it is we again. see it again, a great run by Gadine. He just really finds the open hole beautifully. He can see a 1,000 in his eyes. Oh, boy. And he, well, so he'll get it. That will be negated. Come all the way back.
That was a hold. Gets to Bedford. Back it goes. Another 10 yards. Illegal block is the call. First down and 22, New Bedford at the New Bedford 28-yard line. The ball on the 40-yard line, excuse me. No, and JoJo will try it again. Just 25 yards away from breaking the 1,000 uh, yard mark on the season, and he's That's had a, a great year. Great. Let me, <laughs> let me clear this up. It's a spot foul. They'll mark it at the 40-yard line. First down and 11. There we go. JoJo Gennite in motion to the near side. Sharik Mendes on the carry, barrels up the middle. Gains of about three and a half yards. Durfee Hilltop is closing it up, second down, and about eight yards to go for New Bedford. 27 to nothing, the Whalers out in front, winding it down here at Walsh Field, 7.36 to go in the third quarter. All New Bedford, as expected, and from the Durfee Hilltop point of view, hoping that maybe the rain and the mud might slow them down, hasn't been the case. And as you pointed out before, playing on the snow is not the same thing as playing yeah. on the mud in the rain. Hey, if, it, uh, if the rain and the mud and all that hasn't stopped Wayne Hamlet from wearing shorts and a hat today, then... Uh, That's his uniform. No he has hat. to wear That's that. Right. Shorts and no hat. Corey Medeiros to the near side. Stiff arms a guy. <laughs> Tried to get to the first down marker with some extra effort. He'll be stopped at about the 49-yard line. And there's the Durfee Hilltopper contingent. Ryan Pacheco in the middle, number 20. <laughs> and they're lining up. And there we see the replay. Medeiros rolls out to his right. Play designed for him to take it himself. Fake handoff inside. Again, that's how that play was designed. Nice Just to a little bit extra effort right there at the end. They are going to mark it short, as we said. It's third down and about a yard to go at the New Bedford 49. Sharik Mendes in motion. Matt Trahan falls forward with the football as Wayne Hamlet continues to switch back and forth between those two senior quarterbacks. Matt Trahan and Corey Medeiros, as we pointed out in the first half, were part of the quarterback controversy. Two years in a row. Last year, Matt Trahan won the job, but then was injured. Corey Medeiros came in to a fine job throughout the rest of the year. This year, same thing. Matt Trahan again getting the job. And Corey Medeiros actually doing a great job for New Bedford as well from his defensive end position. Really turned out to be a fine defensive player as well. Well, there'll be no controversy next year. Ray Bolger. Rudy. Odds, or Rudy Bolger. There's a Ray Bolger. That, Ray Bolger was the, the, <laughs> the lion in, uh, is that right? No, wasn't was he a uh, vaudeville guy, wasn't he? <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, you were close. Anyway, Rudy Bolger uh, will start next year and for the remainder of his three years. Actually, he'll be a uh, junior next year, so he'll have two years at the helm at quarterback. And people are very, very optimistic about this young man and what he'll do for the New Bedford offense come Trahan and Trahan and uh, Medeiros' leave. <laughs> First down and 10, New Bedford at about the Durfee Hilltopper 49. Sharik Mendes in motion to the left. Joe Jogadine on the carry. Has five. It has about eight yards. Knocked out of bounds at about the 40-yard line of the Durfee Hilltoppers and a late flag again. And we see the Durfee Hilltoppers there. Mark Megna, I think, arguing with the official as we look at it again. And it looks like the officials listened to Megna. And Wayne Hamlet went out there and had some extra words for the official, and down goes the flag again. It was a hold against New Bedford. <laughs> what do you call that, a technical foul? <laughs> Holding against the Whalers, brings the ball back. 10-yard penalty. We didn't like that call. And then another. 10 yards on top of that because of the well, I think harassment that, of the official. I think that Hamlet was angry because I think he thought there should have been a personal foul call on that extracurricular banging up. Uh, Durfee was uh, banging here and there, a little extra hit here and there on that uh, tackle, and I think he thought there should have been a personal foul call, and there should have been an offset penalty. The other, way. Penalty, the right? other way. Well, it's a first down and 30 from the 30. 
Corey Madera's back in there as quarterback now. Jarek Mendes, Jojo Godine behind him. Durfee showing blitz for a second. Now it's Jojo Godine to the left. Godine hauled down from behind. Barely gets back to where he started. Let's see if we can pick up the tackler 45 Palumbo. Rick, the senior at 5'8", 160 on the stop for the Hilltoppers. Durfee coming in, one win and eight losses. <laughs> Disappointing season as we take a look at the tackle here by Rick Palumbo. Really tough year for Durfee. Actually, you look at that record and you can figure that out without my help, but it's too bad because I think it was the second game of the year that you went to, Donna. Durfee was all set to chalk up a win against Marshfield. The kid comes up the and kicks a 49-yard <laughs> field goal. With practically no time remaining. Sharik Mendes. Mendes to the 40-yard line. Now the 45-yard line on the extra burst. Down. And they are going to say he's down originally at the 40. Yeah, they ended up winning the following week against Somerset, the Durfee Hilltoppers did. They would have been 2-1 and one if it wasn't for that 49-yard kick by Marshfield that took away a, a, what really looked like it was going to be a W for the Durfee Hilltoppers. And it was a great uh, game, too. Durfee was down by a couple with uh, about four minutes to go. And, uh, I think Brian I think Pacheco had a nice run. Right. Yeah. Brian Pacheco with like a 65-yard run to uh, put them ahead. Great, uh, great run right up the middle, found a hole, and it looked like it was a Durfee victory, as you said, so that was a turning point, certainly in this somewhat of a dismal year, you could say, one and eight. Third down and 19, Corey Medeiros throwing for Derek Duclos, under throws him, and it's incomplete. Speaking to Bob Bogan about this Thanksgiving football game, he said to me, what goes around comes around, apparently Marshfield, the team that kicked the 49-yard field goal, a couple of weeks later, they had a long field goal kicked against them in the closing seconds. They ended up losing a game three to nothing. There you see that. Uh, so it evens out. Incomplete pass, but oh no, <laughs> you think that wouldn't happen? Hey Billy. Marshfield. Uh, Are you staying dry? Powerhouse. They look like a pretty good team. There's a lot of real good local teams in and around uh, the area. Certainly a team that uh, people haven't talked about. We haven't talked about, but people have been talking about, and that's the Case team that is just splendid going to the Super Bowl and uh, Jeff Carrera on the punt ah! division two dies at about the 27 it's a flag down on the play down and around where the line of scrimmage somewhere around the line of scrimmage well here's something that uh, is so eligible ironic. man I was gonna I was gonna think it was something <laughs> of that sort but uh, here's something we haven't mentioned and we should New Bedford at three and five, looking for their first home victory of the year with this one. Yeah, that, that's kind of strange because New Bedford usually plays pretty well at Walsh Field, but just seems like the way it happened is a very loss happened here. A couple of other disappointing losses. The one that we did earlier in the year with BC High was yeah. here. New Bedford could have won at least out of the five losses, could have at least won three of them. The officials you see right there in the middle of your screen talking this over. He gave a signal for an eligible man downfield against Durfee, but New Bedford was punting. There you see Wayne Hamlet to the right discussing it and the fans Love coming it. prepared. That's right. It almost looks like our coats. It's a pretty big, uh, pretty good. If we could get a, a shot of, of the stands from from where we are, from our camera that's up here, to just see all the different, I mean, it's really neat look. There's about a thousand different umbrellas, it looks like. And this is a real big crowd, I'll tell you, a big, big crowd for this type of, of weather. So the ball will be kicked again on what, what they call, what, in the illegal, what, what do they call that? <laughs> Too many men on the field. So it wasn't, in that, it wasn't in an eligible man downfield. They no, had that, that. I thought that's the signal that he was giving. I think it was the wrong signal. But anyway, it's the fourth down and nine. And they didn't tell us. New Bedford will punt it again. Jeff Correa, and it's a fake punt. Jojo Gurdine on the carry. Gurdine has a shot for the first down. He has it. And he's out of bounds at about the 22 yard line. And Jojo Gurdine just surpassed the 1,000 
1,000 yards on the season will go over today. First time for Jojo Godine. And you can see he looks happy because he knows what that run meant, the significance of that run. First for the year for any of the uh, New Bedford players, and certainly first for Jojo and in his nice career. He's closing in on 200 yards. 198 yards on the day for Jojo Gridine. That was about a 28 yarder there. And as you said, 1,000 yards on the season. Jeff Carrera, new close, excuse me, 87. Derek hauling the ball in on the quick pass from Matt Trayon. He looks like he may be hurt on the hit. It's a game of about nine yards. Looks like he hurt his leg. He was twisted up as uh, he was grabbed by the ankle. Derek Duclos usually playing a split end. TJ Gadon usually playing a tight end. And uh, with those three, with those two, and Korea out there uh, at wide receiver, they have a lot of a lot of weapons that uh, Trahan and Medeiros can go to. But uh, this is something we don't like to see. Wayne Hamlet coming in the shorts there. Talking to Derek Duclos, he's a senior. Good baseball player for both New Bedford High School and the Legion team. He's a six footer, 185 pounds, and this is his last football game, last game of his career. And exactly as I had seen when he was, when he right after he caught the ball, he was grabbed at the ankle. It looks like his left ankle, or even knee, more like an ankle, must have been twisted. Probably a bad sprain or something such as that. Uh, we'll see him get up. Being catered to them. And there's a break in the action here from Paul Walsh Field. 27 0 New Bedford. We'll be back with more in a moment. 3.07 to go here in the third quarter. 27 0 New Bedford. Second down and one. Chris Gula in the backfield, and Chris gets the ball. Gula spins and has the first down just beyond the 10 yard line. So Chris Gula, the senior. Number 42, one of the smallest members of this New Bedford team. At 5'1", 165 pounds, the senior getting some duties on the offense as he wraps up a great New Bedford High School career as the nose guard. Well, Marcel Gonsal's coming off the field, so is Jeff Correa, but Jeff goes back. <laughs> now you see Jeff coming back into the huddle. Well, we have a first down and nine, so. First and goal at the nine for the New Bedford Whalers. There's been no scoring in the second half. New Bedford led by the same score of 27-0 at the end of the first half. Jojo Gadine with two touchdowns. Nine on the season. Shariq Mendes with one, nine on the season. Jeff Carrera, touchdown reception, eight on the season. And Matt Trahan. Wanting to make it one more. He's got for himself. nine touchdown passes on the season. And there you see Matt Trahan. And they're announcing the 1,000 yard rushing season for Jojo Gennady that we mentioned before. And he gets a nice hand from the crowd here. And Walsh Field is Jojo number 30. Celebrating high fives, congratulations from Gula, Trahan, and the rest of the Whalers, Ribeiro. Up on the line. The Bedford will end up with an under 500 season. Disappointing, I suppose, to some degree, but a lot of bright spots. And Bob Bogan said it in the newspaper, this is a better team than what that record indicates. No question about it. So many weapons. Tough schedule. First down and nine, New Bedford in a wishbone. Matt Trahan looking for the end zone. Touchdown. And it is a touchdown. He looked like he fumbled it for a moment. But Trahan is in. And it's 33-0 New Bedford. That Trahan, one more for the record books. The quarterback, the six foot, 175 pound senior, getting one more score for the Railers. This one coming with 2.20 to go here in the third quarter. And I'll tell you, there are some times that the Durfee Hilltopper offense looks like they have some spark, looks like they have some weapons, looks like they're going to make something happen. Various times in a game, it looks like they're going to break something open, they're going to get on the board, they're going to come close when they're down by one or two scores, and something just happens. They just do something to defeat themselves and beat themselves. And we're just about to see whether or not it's it's 34 to nothing with a... Rudy Bulger is the holder. 
<laughs> Corey Medeiros was supposed to be the kicker. He picks up the ball. He leaps. Oh. And he has the two-point conversion pending the flags. How do you like that? <laughs> and it's going against New Bedford. So take it down. It's going to be a legal procedure <laughs> right before well, the ball good heads-up play uh, by Medeiros, anyway. Before the ball was snapped, actually. Actually, as it was snapped. Here it is again. So Corey will try to kick it again from five yards back. Nice try there by Medeiros. We can use that uh, <laughs> on some play film there. <laughs> some highlight film. I don't know about you, but it's turkey time. Yeah, I'm, it, it, <laughs> I'm cold and I'm hungry. And the more I see the mud, I get even hungry. Now, why would the mud make you hungry? I don't know, I just look at the field and it's cold and it's raw and it's muddy and it makes me want to go eat. I don't know, you know, makes me feel like a hard day's work, time for dinner. Here's the extra point attempt by Medeiros. And he just misses the left goal post wide to the left. So it's 33-0 New Bedford, 2.20 to go here in the third quarter. And we play 11-minute quarters here in the big three. So get the rest of this and then another 11 minutes as we wrap it up here. And we hope you have a chance to catch New Center 13 tomorrow night if you're watching this on Thanksgiving Day. And if you're not watching this on Thanksgiving Day, join us Monday night. We will have a story on Monday night. So we will focus in some of the old New Bedford High graduates. Donna Fendrick spending last Tuesday night down at the 11th Annual Gridiron Club Hall of Fame Banquet and Dinner. And we'll be focusing in on some of those folks that played right here at this very field many years ago. Who we're going to see on Monday. <laughs> I just put you on the spot. I know you grabbed a few of the yeah, members I there. Mr. Walters, who... Uh, what year did he play? 19... <laughs> actually, he graduated, I think, in I wonder it was 49 or 50. Mm -hmm. Went on to play for the Chicago, actually, the Chicago Cardinals and then the mm -hmm. Chicago Bears. Uh, so we'll be talking to him. And if you're watching this game on Thanksgiving afternoon, we'll have highlights of this game and the Dartmouth Fairhaven game tomorrow night on New Center 13. Again, if you're watching over the weekend, watch out for that one more Hall of Fame interview on Monday night. That was a nice, uh, a nice story, and to speak with a whole bunch of the old timers who uh, graduating anywhere from the early 30s to the late 40s and early 50s, and just talking about some of them will talk to us about how football here in New Bedford has changed over the, gosh, the last 60 years, different styles of football and how the rivalries have changed. Although what you'll hear most of them say is that they've remained primarily the same. Certainly, this New Bedford Durfee rivalry. Mike Rogers assistance. fell on that ball there, by the way, and he was tackled by Jose Torado. First and 10, Durfee. And this is Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers passed the 40. Knocked down at about the 42-yard line. That'll be a gain of about seven yards. Set up a second down. And about four for the Durfee Hilltoppers. 155 to go here in the third. Second down and four, Durfee. Wide to the left, Chad Sowersby. Sonnison, quick handoff inside. Steve Pacheco spins away. Finally will be knocked down by the New Bedford Whalers defense. Steve Pacheco entirely consumed by mud. <laughs> He's drenched <laughs> in mud. He is a picture of perfection there. If you are watching this on Thanksgiving afternoon, we will have the Fairhaven Dartmouth football game in its entirety right after this football game at about 7.30 or so, wherever this game is over. So it's a Thanksgiving high school football doubleheader here on Channel 13. And Fairhaven is out in front 20 to 7 as we speak here, taped this morning. So it looks like they'll win the game. And you can see the entire game with Chris Roberts at the microphone from Dartmouth. And you can see that game. That's always been a much closer game, at least in recent years, Dartmouth and Fairhaven, than this New Bedford-Durfee game, unfortunately. 
for the folks who follow this rivalry between the cities. But there is some optimism in the future for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Bob Bogan was telling me that the JV team ended up with a 6-3 and three record. First time they've had a winning record in a long time. And the freshman team, led by Brian DeRocky, who is playing on the varsity today, ended up with a 6-2 and two record. And the ball is carried to, oh, I'd say about the 50-yard line, near the 50. Chris Gomes on the stop, <laughs> Brian Pacheco on the carry, and there you see all of the mud. Do you know that the Durfee freshman team beat the Brackton freshman team? That's right. Now, what does that early mean? I don't season. know. We can't, get, early on. we can't get too excited about that, but. Well, I mean, the Brockton players, you know, there's a feeder system, certainly, and uh, over the years, Brockton being so dominating and dominant, and it's got to come from somewhere, and it comes from the freshman squad. So that's a pretty good sign there for Durfee. And Inside handoff to Pacheco, Steve. Barrels over the line of scrimmage. New Bedford in there, Russell Santos, sophomore defensive end in there. Filling in, a lot of substitutions for Wayne Hamlet. Consatio also in there, third down and about five for Durfee. Third quarter comes to an end, 33-0 New Bedford. We've got the fourth quarter from Walsh Field coming up in a moment. Fourth quarter action now at Paul Walsh Field. Third down and about five inside handoff by the Hilltoppers, Pacheco past the 50-yard line, but not a lot of room in there. New Bedford closing it up. Robert Gendron, a senior defensive tackle, 5'10", 200 pounds, seeing some action here as we wind it up on Thanksgiving Day. Fourth down and four for Durfee at the New Bedford 49. And I think it's <laughs> to the best interest of uh, most of the players. I'm sure that they uh, are looking forward to this game coming to a halt, would you say? Durfee Hilltop is unable to get a man off the field in time. Look like number 18 there. That's Chi Bang. It's an illegal procedure. I'm not sure if the in the chaos they moved on the line or whether or not they could get the guy off the field, whatever but it's a procedure penalty against the Hilltopper, sets up a fourth down and nine. So as we pointed out, right after this football game, if you are watching on Thanksgiving, it'll be Fairhaven at Dartmouth. Fairhaven apparently has won the football game 20 to seven. You can see it all on channel 13 after this game. And if you're watching this repeated no, over the weekend. You don't want to watch it now, Paul. I'm sure they, <laughs> they'll know before it airs. Yeah, I'm sure too. <laughs> it's a tape delay. Tape delay. Paul just... I blew it. Fourth it. down and nine. Brian Pacheco this time. To about the enemy 49-yard line. New Bedford takes over right there with 9.40 to go in the game. 33-0 New Bedford. Pacheco, a real big guy, and he's hard to bring down. And uh, when the New Bedford uh, lineman sort of grabbed him and pulled him down, he... Got an extra two, two yards or so. <laughs> there you see the two New Bedford backs. Sharik Mendes, Goodine was off to the left there. Rudy Bulger is coming in. Good to see him in there. He's the quarterback of the future, we always say, but he'll go in there for a couple of downs. Got to throw a few passes at the tail end of the Brockton game, but unfortunately unable to complete any of those passes. Today he did very, very, very well with a couple of completions and nice two-point uh, conversion. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. Bulger. Pitch back the other way. Fumble and the Durfee Hilltoppers fall on the fumble. Roberto Carter was the halfback on that play, the 5'10", 165-pound senior, but very tough, understandable. And Durfee gets the ball at the New Bedford 49, first and 10. New Bedford with this victory will go to four and five on the season. Durfee will drop to one and nine. And the first year for head coach Wayne Hamlet comes to an end as we take a look at the fumble again. I think Wayne would have liked to have gone over 500, but just from watching the team, I see very little difference from what Joe Worth used to do. So he did a nice job first year. Pacheco gains about seven yards. 
Chris Gomes on the stop for the Whalers. Boy, I'll tell you, a lot of flags in this game. Wouldn't you say, last couple of quarters, just one flag after another, really putting a sort of a... A damper? Damper. <laughs> I didn't know if I should say that. It was just too good. <laughs> Rich Ribera right there, number 55. Looking mean on the New Bedford sidelines. He's had a nice career at New Bedford High School. Left guard and defensive tackle, 5'10", 240-pound senior. And we look at many of the other New Bedford Whalers. Nice big offensive line. Bob Bogan, the head coach of the Durfee Hilltoppers, assisted by Steve Meniz, Ed Karen, Mitch Lown, Scott Hurtu. And the freshman coach, Jack Doyle, leading his team to a 6-2 and two record, along with Tim White. Those are the guys coaching for the Durfee Hilltoppers. The Bedford, Wayne Hamlet, John Seed, Harry Lowe, and the rest of the guys keeping it going on the Whalers side. That sets up a second down and about eight yards for the Durfee Hilltoppers. The one reason why you see a lot of the same things, uh, certainly Hamlet respected Joe Worth and, and uh, his play calling and his uh, coaching uh, strategy and uh, abilities and uh, coaching under Joe Worth for so many years. Uh, Kind of adopted a lot of that same play call. Pacheco will have the first down for the Durfee Hilltoppers there. Quick opening up the middle by the Durfee offensive line. And move the chains, it'll be first and 10 at about the 19. Bernardo on the stop for New Bedford. And if you're the Durfee Hilltoppers, you'd like to find the end zone at least once before time runs out. That's what they're trying to do here with 8.21 to go. A lot of people saying before this game started that uh, Durfee could be shut out once again. They've been shut out a couple times this year. Brian Pacheco! See what happened was... Tut! Nope. Right on the goal line. Brian Pacheco. So Brian, the 5'9", 160-pound sophomore, finds the opening on the inside again. Thought he may have pay dirt there, but he's knocked down at the one yard line. Take a look at the hole. Jeff Carrera, one of the stoppers there, as you see it on the replay, along with Jose Torado. First and goal at the one. Brian Pacheco to the left, Steve Pacheco to the right. Quarterback keeper, no, handoff, touchdown, Pacheco. Steve carrying it in, and the Durfee Hilltoppers are on the board. 33 to six, New Bedford. Steve Pacheco, the 5'11", 190 pound sophomore, finds the end zone and both Pacheco's contributing to that one. That's not, I mean, you, you know, 33 to six, it probably go down to do their best to make it 33 to eight. And, uh, you know, this is a tough, tough day to play football and players will tell you they liked it, but Two-point conversion, Brian Pacheco. Brian Pacheco will be short. So the score will, will remain 33 to six with 7.42 remaining. And uh, you know, New Bedford was simply a dominating team this year. Uh, you know, their record at three and five didn't uh, really surpass Durfee at one and eight. All that much doesn't look like the team would be all that much more dominating, but they really were New Bedford, a much better team than three and five. And, Played also playing some very tough teams. Their schedule much more difficult than the Durfee Hilltopper schedule throughout the year, as they played Brockton, New Bedford did, and they played Zavarian and others. But uh, you know you have to look at that as well. And you know you figured New Bedford would win this game, and people were saying it would be a big, a big victory and uh, sort of a crushing uh, kind of a victory. But uh, you know 33-6, yeah, it's a big, big win. But Durfee played hard, they played strong, and uh, they have a young team, and Bob Bogan feels good about that. And as you said, the freshmen very good, and the JV doing very well with their 6-3 and three winning record for the first time in such a long time. And there's some hope for the Durfee Hilltopper team in the future, and certainly a lot of hope next year, uh, although New Bedford is losing Korea and their quarterback tandem of Medeiros and uh, Treyan, they're gonna go with Bolger, who has, people said, has been the quarterback of the future here, and certainly going to be a tough team next year, too, hopefully tougher. Should get another look at Rudy Bulger, the young sophomore quarterback, who will be taking over the helm in all likelihood over the next couple of years. 
Steve Pacheco with the quick, excuse me, Maniz with the quick kick. Corey Medeiros has the ball. Pitches out to Jeff Correa. Correa cuts one way, cuts the other, still on his feet. Knocked out of bounds at about the 50 yard line. Can't even tell where the out of bounds is with all the mud and right around the midfield or so. That was a wild play by the Durfee Hilltoppers. They were kind of standing there. And then all of a sudden, Moniz just runs forward and kicks the ball off, trying to catch New Bedford off guard. Corey Medeiros had the ball originally pitched back to Jeff Correa, who will be wrapping up a great high school career in New Bedford as wide receiver. And New Bedford originally had the ball run all the way back to midfield. Penalty against New Bedford. Medeiros with the very legal <laughs> <laughs> pitch back there. New Bedford will take over at their own 25-yard line, a hold against the Whalers. A lot of holding calls against New Bedford, a lot of penalties against New Bedford today. The hold coming back at the 35, so it's 10 yards from there, back to the 25. New Bedford takes over from there with 7.29 to go in the game, 33-6, to six, the Whalers. And if you're going to look at any area of concern, if in fact there is any area of concern for New Bedford, it would be all those holding penalties up 33-6 demandingly. I mean, you sort of have to look at all those holding penalties and uh, the yardage that they've lost due to the penalties today. Rudy Bulger, quarterback Roberto Carter is the halfback. They've got a couple of wide outs to the left as well. And Carter has the ball, falls forward for a couple. Roberto Carter, number 32, he's a senior. Trying to get him some work here as he wraps up his career, 5'10", 165 pound senior. Comes Chris Gula, completely mudded out. <laughs> so it's a second down at about nine for New Bedford. Chris Gula is the fullback. Roberto Carter, the halfback, behind Bulger. And they do give it to Gula. The ball is loose, I believe. Oh, I guess he did hang on to it. Hard to tell in all the mud. Gula following the lead of the other running back, Carter, and gains another yard, if that. They'll mark it actually back, third down and 10. People who have been watching this game from uh, its inception today, you can see that obviously New Bedford putting in uh, their second string team and a lot of their uh, JV players simply because their uniforms are clean. You look at uh, Chris Gula, and he's engulfed in mud. He's, <laughs> you can't see his number. Look there was back. a fumble there. You could see it on the replay. But Gula came up with it. And it's third down and 10. Bolger would love to throw the ball. And he rolls right. Pumping. Fires. And it's incomplete. And there's another flag on the play. It'll probably be a, he, may, he might have gone over the line of scrimmage. I'm not quite sure. Looks like there may have been Brian Kirby, number six, the intended receiver, as we look at the battered Durfee sideline. Intentional grounding. So it was an intentional grounding call. So it's a fourth down and about 16 for New Bedford. New Bedford will be punting the ball back to Durfee one more time. New Bedford Whalers, as we said, will wrap up the season. Four wins and five losses. Durfee, one and nine. I think Wayne Hamlet did a nice job with this New Bedford team. Very young team. And same can be said for Bob Bogan. The mud. And that's dinner. <laughs> Working with a lot of sophomores and juniors. Jeff Correa with the punt. Bounces down to the 47-yard line. It was Bolger who actually down the uh, the uh, punt right there. I'll tell you, there's just got to be a, a occasional here and there, maybe mouthful of muds. A couple wellers and a couple of the hilltoppers probably a little mud today, huh? A little prelude to uh, Thanksgiving. Whether you wanted to or not. <laughs> there you see the fans, a lot of them braving the conditions. Most of them have left. Did have a pretty decent crowd when it started. 
at about 10.15 this morning despite the conditions. Pacheco, Steve gets the carry. Gains about five yards up the middle for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Actually, there's more people here than I thought there was going to be. Usually this is the biggest draw of the year and it may still have been, but the crowd obviously hurt by the weather conditions. But a lot of people still came out well prepared with the umbrellas and the raincoats. Stayed for about the first half and maybe part of the third quarter, but by then New Bedford was up 27 nothing. There you see the fans and most of them have caved in now. Thinking about the turkey dinner, I guess. Pacheco again, maybe a yard. Isn't that great Thanksgiving? It's so much food. This is a good holiday, isn't it? Even people who diet stop dieting. That's their excuse. It's Thanksgiving. Happy and I always take the day after Thanksgiving. Kind of screws the whole thing up going into work, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> well, you, you have the day off. Well, you don't have the day, day off, off here. From You're going to work tomorrow night. The but day off from my day job, and right. we'll just cruise into 13, put on the Thanksgiving highlights, and then see you later. <laughs> it won't take you too long, Paul. You're I'm fast. Fast and efficient. efficient. That's important. Fast and efficient. Brian Pacheco to about the 35-yard line. I believe he will have the first down, and he does for the Hilltoppers. Now 4.22 to go in the game as they stop the clock to move the chains. 33 to 6, New Bedford. So JoJo Gunine wraps up a tremendous year, only a sophomore. But JoJo, the 5'8", 150-pound sophomore running back, rushing for well over 200 yards in this football game and rushing for over 1,000 yards in the 1992 football season. Twisting and turning. Number 25 for the Hilltoppers on the carry. I know Shane Jordan used to wear that number, but I don't think he is wearing it there. New Bedford went three and two uh, mid-season and uh, been on a three-game losing streak, so not only is this a great way to uh, to end a season by beating your rivals, Durfee, and certainly your division rivals at that, but also a great way to end the season by breaking a three-game losing streak. The ball is loose, and the New Bedford Whalers have fallen on the fumble. Flags all over the place, though. And it's going against the Durfee Hilltoppers. Will be declined. And the Whalers take over. <laughs> Let's see if we can get another look at all that action in there. Of course, the worse the field gets, the more both teams are fumble prone. They did a great job here at Wallfield at the beginning. You can see the lines, you can see the numbers, and now look at what you have left. There's the ball there. Looks like Kevin Bernardo, the defensive end and kicker, falling on the ball. He is a junior, so he'll be back next year. Even the linesmen can't keep their footing. They go on up, they're so excited with anticipation. They get to the line, and they've been sliding all over the place. Just going to the script. <laughs> Rudy Mulder now quarterbacking. Throws, and I believe he has a man, but he might have been out of bounds. And it's ruled incomplete. And once again, Brian Kirby, number six, who was a defensive back, turned wide receiver, the 5'10", 150-pound sophomore, was the intended receiver from Rudy Bulger. Bulger likes to roll out, doesn't to stay in the pocket as much as uh, Trahan does. Uh, Medeiros doesn't really throw the ball as much as Trahan. Um, I don't know what his situation will be with accuracy. But as far as being able to throw the ball a long distance, he sure. just has a cannon. So he can learn to be accurate. He accurate. will be an excellent quarterback. Go with, with a little bit of touch and uh, be able to scramble a little bit. Pitch back to the left. That's number 23. Eric, make that Ernie Andrade, the 5'6", 135-pound sophomore, getting his first carry of the game for New Bedford. It will be minimal gain at best. Maybe even lost a yard. You see the replay once again, and you're right, he did lose a yard. Good penetration by the line, defensive line of Durfee. And if you look at uh, Bolger, doesn't he kind of remind you a little bit of Randall Cunningham? His height is... The way he just right whips. Lean. The way he throws the ball, it's like a whip. They throw the ball long. Woody Bulger, the quarterback, every down, different people in the backfield. And it's a pitch back to 35 of the New Bedford Whalers. Not on the roster, but he has a first down. Now what would have been 
perfect right there as if 35, who hadn't had gotten any mud on him, had not been tackled at all today, actually was untouched and ran in for a touchdown. Still clean uniform and all. Could be Adam <laughs> Ignacio, the 5'6 sophomore running back with the ball here. And Ignacio with the first down for New Bedford. All the way down to the 47-yard line of the Whalers. Now 2.07 to play. No two-minute warning. <laughs> That's good. Keep that clock rolling. First and 10, Rudy Bulger, the sophomore. Winding it down for the Whalers. Quick inside handoff. Plenty of room up the middle. That's going to be a gain of 10 yards. Nice play right there to mix things up a bit. Uh, not a whole lot of acceleration on the part of the running back, but certainly uh, enough of a holding uh, help him uh, to gain about uh, seven, eight yards there. And that was a real nice way to mix things up. Many of these numbers that are being worn by these players not on the roster given to us by the respective teams, unfortunately. A lot of changes at the last minute in terms of jersey, particularly the second and third stringers, but that's a first down for New Bedford at about the 42-yard line. gain of 11 yards, I would say, at eight. Bulger puts his head down, crashes forward to the 35-yard line of the Durfee Hilltoppers. Rudy Bulger, 6'1", 165 pounds. And he may not be done growing. The taller you are, the better it is, especially with a passing team like New Bedford. Fifty-three seconds left. Brian Kirby way out to the right if they decide to throw. Unlikely. Inside handoff. That's going to be Chris Gula. Chris Gula forced <laughs> back to the 35-yard line, back to about the 37. Chris Gula lifted by his uniform. That's how tiny he is. <laughs> they picked him up and carried him backwards? Looked like David Almeida just kind of picked him up with one hand and... <laughs> You saw Gula waving his hands and feet saying, let me go. Bob Walsh on the stop for Durfee. Defensive back, sophomore. A couple guys wide to the right for New Bedford in the third down and three. Rudy Vulcher has Carter, pitches to Carter. Carter past the 30, knocked down. We'll have a first down for New Bedford. And time runs out. The New Bedford Whalers wrap up another Thanksgiving victory as they take down the Durfee Hilltoppers 33-6. And we'll be right back to wrap it up from Walsh Field in a moment. <laughs> 